With regard to awards, in 2010, the International Association of Women Police, based in the US, awarded uh, Sandhya Vam the International Scholarship of Distinction. In 2006, the Kerala Police awarded the President's Police Medal for Meritorious Service. She, she has, she is a great literate was her writings has brought in a lot of name and fame. Her creative projects have been published in many books of literature, several research papers in the police science. In addition, Madam edited Impressions, a short story of Kerala Police published by the Director General of Police Kerala. She also conceptualized a website, Kerala Police History. Her literary publications include, which is in Malayalam, The Lullabies in 1999, uh, the nurse, uh, the Balawadi, that is with the nursery in 2001, the State Institute of Children's Literature, won, uh, won an award, and also Forest River, my friend, Ammo, how nice she is, the wonders in the Sparrow Hill, and the collections, she also have a vast collections of poems, such as the Lantern, Great Kokal of the Tree of Nira Maruta, O Chempa Tree, Do Not Return, and um, Madam has established herself. I think she's got a she's a multifaceted personality. In, uh, now, uh, okay. marriage field, a very distinguished person. And I actually salute Ma'am because she has she's a role model for the country where she empowers women and sees that women raises to great height. And she's heading up police force. I think that's a very important thing which you happen to see. And Madam, we are indeed honored on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, Hello India, LNCP, Principal, and we have everybody a warm welcome to you, ma'am. I also like to welcome a most distinguished speaker, Fatima. We were eagerly waiting for you because it's the first time you have an Olympian with us. And we, are, we were eagerly waiting to see, to see and hear you on the screen because you're done being the first women from Morocco to represent in the Olympics. I think again, it's a, it's a big honor. So a warm welcome to you to this program. I'd like to welcome Kluka. Thank you so much. With all the smiling face where you happen to grace this. A warm welcome to you. A warm welcome to Rosa. You have brought all these personalities to us. I'd like to welcome Dr. G. Kishosa, who's our principal. Welcome all the invited guests and my dear friends. May I now request uh, Sandhya ma'am to kindly speak a few words. Ma'am, please. Kishore sir, would you like to speak something for Sandhya ma'am sir? Kishore sir, before ma'am speaks, I think. Thank you, Dr. Usha. Uh, I think uh, along with uh, our distinguished uh, resource person today, we got uh, Dr. Dr. Sandhya Madden. As you have narrated her biodata, I don't want to again repeat, but uh, is, Madden is a multifaceted personality, having immense knowledge in uh, policing, as well as various literary fields. Uh, also a keen sports enthusiast, having a lot of uh, passion towards uh, physical education, sports, and uh, uh, also related areas. So of late, uh, Madam has now been instrumental in making a uh, training module, online training module for uh, uh, the, all the entire police personnel, not only in Kerala, but also for the country. Uh, we had we are working jointly with the uh, uh, APA Kerala Police Academy, which is uh, for which uh, Madam is spearheading. So it's a matter of great pleasure that and privilege that we have uh, Dr. Sandhya Madam in this course. Uh, we, I also play, welcome uh, our distinguished uh, resource person today, uh, uh, Dr. Fatima El Fakir, so a very, very renowned, distinguished, eminent, and uh, senior uh, faculty in uh, uh, sports management, so associate researcher, laboratory vulnerabilities and innovation, president of National Association of Women's Activity, uh, so, and also the Moroccan. The first Moroccan to participate in 1972 uh, Olympics. So, I do all on behalf of Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs. I 
and uh, on behalf of LNCP and on my personal behalf, I welcome uh, distinguished Dr. Fatima El Fatir also uh, to our host. Welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, and all to Dr. Yeah. Uh, Sandhya ma'am is there? Sandhya ma'am? I think you should then in the meantime I'll introduce Sanjay. Sanjay. Uh, sir, could we continue with this? Uh, yeah. You may please go ahead with the work. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, for a brief detail of uh, Fatima El Fakir, yeah. professor at SMS Robert. Sport Management School, World Athletics Expert and Speaker in Gender Relationship, Associate Researcher, Laboratory on Vulnerabilities and Innovations in Sport, University of Lyon, President of the National Association of Women, Physical Activity and Sport, Member of the Executive Office of the International Association of Physical Education, Sport mm -hmm. for Girls and Women, Former President, African Athletics Confederation, Northern Region, Former director and teacher at Mole Ratchet National Sport Institute, former national coach of high performance athletics. Ma'am has a doctor in science and technology of physical activities and sports of the University Claude Bernard Leon. And uh, I'd like to say some of her sporting achievements. A brief sporting career, first Moroccan champion and African record woman in 400 meter hurdles, gold medalist in 400 meter hurdles bronze in 100 meter hurdles at the first African Athletic Championship in Dakar in 1979. So, first Moroccan to take part in the Olympic Games in 1972 in athletics, World Cup in Montreal and World at the University Games in Mexico 1979. Multiple champions and record women at the Morocco and Baghdad in 100, 200 meters, 400 meters, uh, hurdles, relay, Ma'am have become responsible for setting up a system of training and a curriculum and advanced training programs for sporting executives within the ministry for several years. She conducted many researches and supervised a large number of end of studies research work in motor learning, human performance, sports psychology, coaching methodology. She produced 13 lessons given to students in sport option and four articles in peer reviewed journals. Her publications include 17 abstracts of communication conference proceedings, she organized several national and international conferences. She participated, she was in uh, invitations in 28 international congresses. She has contributions in chapter of book, Muslim Women and Sport. And uh, it's indeed a great honor to have a mix, rarely come across a sporting champion with a record in a doctorate, academician. It's a great honor on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs a warm welcome to you, Fatima Ma'am. I think you should be a standing ovation for you. So, Thank warm you. welcome. Thank you and, very much. Uh, yeah. Thank um, you very much. I, I have no video. I, I see only Dr. Yusha. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for uh, this presentation, for you and uh, for every, uh, everybody. Uh, Fine. But, but please, uh, uh, no excuse issues. my my bad English. No, no. Uh, I would like I would like to to speak with you in French or in Arabic. Uh, to to to. Yeah, and to give some uh, many words, good words, <laughs> but in English I I have a problem. No so problem. Thank you, thank you in my uh, yeah. heart. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so, so, so much for this presentation. Uh, I, Could I just I think, say a word, please, uh, Fatima? If uh, uh, um, Sandhya Ma'am has come and joined us. Sir, Kishore, sir, should uh, Sandhya Ma'am joined us? I don't think so. Yeah, Madam, it's on you. Yes. Maybe Madam will join at the end. Hey, doctor. Fine, sir. So, Fatima, can we start the session, please? I start? Yeah, we are. Oh. Okay. Uh, uh, so I I I, I must uh, I must uh, go uh, to start to have a video because I saw 
and mute and mute. I, I, how, how can I? Uh, no, no. They'll open the screen for you. To Fatima share you, to share Fatima. you my my conference. We will share, ma'am. Fatima, ma'am. We will share from here. We will share from here. I I send uh, I send yeah. sent the my I, presentation. Yeah, I got. I will share from here. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Zoom. I begin the now. No. It's okay. Yeah, we are sharing, ma'am. Just a minute. Thank you, Doctor Shiro. Shiro, Doctor Shiro. Share from there. Anish can share from there. So, Okay. <clears throat> Hi. Yeah, can you see it? <clears throat> yes. You could start. You can start, ma'am. Fatima, ma'am. Yes. You can start. Start. Next. Uh, go to the next slide, Pranesh. So, I give you a great hello from Kingdom of Morocco. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation, so Dr. Kishore, Dr. Yusha, and uh, thanks uh, and congratulations for uh, all the uh, organization committee for this event. It's very, very interesting, and congratulations. Thank you. So, my... Uh, 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 my, my presentation is related to Moroccan athletes' historical approach uh, in a too long period, 
1956 to 2016. This, uh, uh, I want to see you this, in, in Morocco, uh, a sports, a sports practice is a sociocultural phenomenon spontaneously uh, in our society. The first official text governing the sport in Morocco has been emerged in 1957. In 1959, several structures, including those related to sports activities in schools and universities, have been created and which have been from now on supervised by the Ministry of Education. It should be noted that ministerial decree focuses on the practice of sports and the organization of sports competitions without any reference to physical education. It means that sports of practice, it was a phenomen phenomenon spontaneously. Uh, in the national constitution revised on 20, 2011, sport and physical education are considered as a social phenomenon and as a human right. Before, the, before that, this, this the date, in 1987, uh, we, we had the uh, first law of uh, sport and physical education, and uh, it remained till, 19, till 2010, uh, and we have a second uh, law. During 1915, Morocco has established a national education and school systems in order to build the nation through learning and education, Morocco is being modernized. Women are experiencing a real emancipation. From the beginning of the 1960, the practice of sport and physical education was generalized is compulsory in the school system for girls and boys. The announcement of the women's decade proclaimed by the United Nations 1976-1985 uh, and the promulgation of the Convention of the Fight Against All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CEDAW, 1979, generates a lot of reform for Moroccan women. The access for physical education and sport at school and, and universities to sports Recreation to high level sports is encouraged in the same way for men and women. Main purpose of this study. My research aims to set the first historiography of elite and high level female Moroccan athletes. Is that part of the research of history in the present time? It focuses on the evolution of sport trajectories for 21 athletes from 1956 and 2016. Since the official institutionalization of the Royal Moroccan Athletics Federation, the main structures and the development of national athletics. Objectives of the study, constituting an oral history of the 20 one Moroccan athletes who have reached the sports series, that is to say the, the international competitions. To reconstruct these athletes' life path in order to study their sporting career from age of admission to school and their first steps in athletics, their access and their progress towards the conquest uh, of athletics until the retirement of uh, this competition in the Moroccan context. And three, determining how physical education and sport influences the access 
to competitive athletes and influence of high level athletics practice in the daily lives of these athletes. And for to identify the specificity of these Moroccan women athletes for, for their profile. Context of research, the physical education and sports provided in the public school education in the countryside would be uh, the pool of elite athletes through school sports by favoring a talent detection and emergence of champions. First national team of women athletes was composed in 1968. Athletes, athletes, athletics is, is the first sports discipline where Moroccan women competed in the Olympic Games in 1972 with two pioneer athletes who have coins in Fatima El Frakin and in 200 meters and, four, and 100 meters and Malika Hadri in 800 meters. In 2011, of the licenses of all sports federations, unfortunately, women's sports is only 21% against and 79% for men. First practice participations of women at least in international first this season period was 1971-1984. 1971 at the Izmir Mediterranean Games in Turkey. 1972 Olympic Games in Munich. 1979 first African Championship, four medals won by women including two golds, 400 meters hurdles, discus, and one silver and two bronze. Olympic Games 1976 and 1980, unfortunately, was boycott of the games in political events. Uh, 1984, Olympic Games at Los Angeles, two Olympic medals, gold medals, the first of which was won by women, Nawal El Mutawakil in 400 holders, and the second by Saida Wita Me in 5,000 meters. These two uh, girls who took part in uh, the Olympic Games in 1972, but this, uh, this picture is the uh, event, Maghribian regional event. Uh, it means uh, Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, and Libya. And it was event in Casablanca in 1972 before the Olympic Games. This uh, picture, uh, it's the, uh, the first continental uh, or gold medal by Fatima El Fakir in the Senegal in Dakar, in 400 meters hurdles. And in 44 years, only three women Olympic medals, only three women were able to obtain Olympic medals. Nawal El Mutawakil in 44, Nuzhabidwan, in 2000, in the same event, 400 hurdles, and Hasna bin Hassi, two medals, silver and bronze, in uh, 800 meters, 40, 2004 and 2008. This picture of Nawal in Mutawakil, second. In World Athletics, Nzabidouan won two-time uh, world uh, champion. And uh, we have also Fatima Wam, Zahra Waziz, Tissam Lakhwad, Mariam Slusi, many, many names of athletes who took part in the uh, high level in athletics. Alors.
Nos habituan. Could you please? Uh, no, go, go, please. Yes, nous habitons. And you could see. Go, please, picture, please. The second. Hasna bin Hassi. And the other one. We so Zahra Waziz. So a continental regional competition. Other Moroccan athletes have also performed brilliantly in African champions, many, many medals, and in Mediterranean games, in the Francophony games, in the Arab games, in the Arab championships, and the Islamic games and the international meeting of IWA. Uh, we, in, uh, in Africa, in general, the oral history is, uh, still predominates. Uh, you couldn't uh, find some uh, books about uh, uh, especially women and sport. And the our theoretical form is the study is part of the recent history of sport, a side of history <coughs> had and taught in Morocco as a discipline. My research also belong to global trend related to study on women and sport, which have become very visible since early 1980. Sport history is recent. Indeed, it was in the early 1970 in North America, particularly in the USA and Canada, that rose the awareness of the importance of academic studies in the field of sports in order to solve strategic problems. United States and Canada are the first countries where the history of sport ha has developed progressively in a structured way. In 1972 was first issued the magazine specialized in the history of sport, not American Society of Sport History. During 1980-19 and especially at the beginning of the 21st century, women and sports history is more visible. Discovering the important sports history has not encountered the same enthusiasm in Morocco, where it is still in an embryonic, embryonic uh, state. Concerning the history of women and high-level sports in Morocco, it is still non-existent. This field remains inexplored. And in uh, African continent also, historical approach. The study is based on the Olympic Games, on the World Athletics Championships, Continental Cups, Arab Athletics Championships, with several of bases in for analyzing the participation of Moroccan women athletes in elite and high-level athletics in the various events in which they competed. Results achieved. Uh, a national level have been taken into account when available. The present study also in, in paces mixed method and combined qualitative and quantitative research and explicitly, uh, explicitly or implicitly use several methods and data. The historical approach applied to the evolution of the athletic path of Moroccan athletes is supported by qualitative research to analyze, discuss, 
on the sports and socio-professional careers of athletes who have practiced or still practice elite athletics. The results of this study have emerged following the implementation of a mixed method involving a triangulation of the data collected in accordance with the recommendations of Denzin and Lincoln. Interview data is completed by documentary analysis data. The historical approach applied to the evolution of athletics path of Moroccan athletes is supported by qualitative research to analyze discuss on the, on the sports and socio-professional careers of athletes who have practiced or still practice elite athletics. High-level data revealed data relating to sports family historical historical, political, psychological, and socioeconomic management of sports careers, the reconversion of athletes at the end of their career have also been taken into account. Other social relationships also represent identity markers, such as the social background of each athlete, the level of education of parents, the level of uh, schooling and types of education pursued, religion, familiarity with sports practices, foreign influence, reasons for the late integration of Moroccan athletes in the Olympic Games, gender relation in the society. Different phases characterizes the methodological part of the level of quantitative research and qualitative research. Semi-directional interview where rigorously uh, prepared basic indicators have been drawn up uh, covering various aspects of the life of selected athletes, preschool and school life, athletic discovery, university, academic path, high level sports career, lifestyle, professional life, and reconversion. Main questions. The stories of 21 athletes are reinforced by information gathered from nine resource persons identified by the athletes themselves at the time of the interviews with them. The exploitation of all these resources made uh, it's possible to answer the questions raised in the study and the starting questions according to which how was the historical evolution of the sporting trajectories of Moroccan athletes constructed elite and high level athletes between 1956 and 2016. The first synthesis is the theoretical answer to the question, how do Moroccan athletes manage to the build their high level sports career and for what reasons? The second synthesis is the theoretical answer to the question, what are the factors that prevent and promote the rise of Moroccan athletes in high level athletics? Each interview was recorded on video sitting on chairs placed face to face with the researcher. The venue of video interview recording as well as the data at time were determined in advance in consultation with the athletes as well as the, with this resource person. The interviews with the athletes were always conducted in pairs between the researcher and the person interviewed most often in the same place. Semidirectional interviews with athletes and researcher Spencer encourage conversation between the researcher and the interviewee based on a discussion guide containing preset tense related to the subject of this research and the which interviewees they had to answer. The interview guides were revised 
revisited and adjusted in each case in relation to the new ideas emerging at the end of each interview. Results is periodization in high-level athletics. The study of the Moroccan athlete stars reveals the following period, 1956-1972. Presence and emergence of women athletes. 1972-1993, visibility of women athletes at international level, especially. 1998-2006, excellence in the high level athletics. And unfortunately, 1997-2060, Erasier. Generation. Indeed, the target population being composed of the pioneer athletes who formed the first national team in 1968, they were related over time by other athletes who witnessed it as part of a continuing journey from the generation of athletes to another, to those who continue their sporting career in, 90, in 2000. 16. Pursuing to evaluate, to ever manage, achieve minima of participation in Olympic Games and the World Championships, but all have shown a lack of professionalism. There are five types of behavior adopted by the athlete of the target population. Premature without withdraw from athletics, achievement of underperformance, excellence and visibility in high level athletics, professionalization in athletics world, stagnation and erasure of world athletics. And the commitment to political will to rise the level of Moroccan athletics, there are two types of management having given opposite results in terms of sports performance in athletics in Morocco. It has been shown that despite the involvement of several players in the preparation of athletes, their participation in various regional and international sporting events their training as elite athletes and high-level athletes of the chronological evolution of the management of the Federation of Athletics, National Athletics. Vulner vulnerabilities. The athletes, the athletes' athletic path have evolved according to periods characterized by events, continuities and breaks, stagnation during which different types of vulnerability linked to systems of meaning have been revealed. The management of Federation and National Institute of Athletics with a domination which has had as a result a dispersion of athletes due to a lack of professionalism regarding the management of high-level athletes within National Institute of Athletics, which is still operational with, in addition, the Federation, the Royal Federation, Moroccan Federation of Athletics, which has more financial resources. It's essential, therefore, for all athletes' sporting trajectories to succeed to undertake multiple collaboration between athletics professionals and institutional players to highlight this multiple times, namely the past, present, and future. Thus, at the end of this study, the current stone was laid to, to produce a histori historiography of Moroccan athletes in relation to the only sports disciplines where they were able to glean titles at various levels, Maghreb, Mediterranean, Arabic, African, Olympic, 
and all of the world championships. This is called to the academic community to investigate research on women and sport practices in Morocco. Evaluated high-level athletes and sacrificed athletes. Notoriety, celebrity, granted retained for medalists and infinite fortune for non-medalists. So we have anything to promote a sport, politic, volunteer, and professionalism at the at the high level in our country in our country. Uh, in 1956 to 90, the Ray Mohammed V encouraged high performance level uh, for teenagers in Morocco without difference in between men and women. The Ray Hassan II also in his period, he did many, many things to encourage uh, involvement of teenagers in sports, in all sports. And uh, presently, the Ray Mohammed VI, since 1999, he gave anything to encourage high sport level for teenagers, men and women. But we have problem. Government aspiration to success for royal distinction. Education, educational challenges, economic issues, social challenges. In perspective, we never finished writing history. Each time we have to take up history by taking into account new questions. Innovate, motivate girls more and more distribute major academic publications, multiple scientific and institutional meeting and reach uh, new challenges and achievements. Capital is unsuccessful experiences. We have many. Never stop sensibilization to increase the number of women in all sector of sports. And I'm listening for your questions. Thank you for your attention. And I beg your pardon for my bad English. <laughs> Not at all, but okay. it's wonderful. <laughs> okay. Ganesh can stop sharing the screen. It was a wonderful session. And I think with the, in spite of the language, you spoke a foreign language. So it I, mu I must to practice every day English. But we, uh, unfortunately, we have now this I, opportunity. We speak Arabic and French in Morocco and Spanish. But after uh, the fourth uh, level, uh, English. Kisho, sir, could we start with questions or, sir? Yeah, yeah, please, please. please Dr. Sanjay, any questions? Yeah, I'd like to uh, have a question. Could you narrate of your experience because you are an Olympian? What are the slowly, slowly please? Did you come across any challenges during your training, being a woman, to excel and reach Olympic Games? Uh, Rosa, uh, could you just translate if you're there? What problems you had? Did you come across? Uh, I my uh, uh, okay. For me and uh, for my uh, uh, girls, uh, my generation, we had no problem. We have no problem in our country. Uh, 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 I, I began to practice sport at uh, nine, 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 yeah, zero, nine. 
and uh, I practice with with boys, with the men. I had the uh, coach men. Uh, my parents uh, t t tell me to to have good results at school and to practice sports without problem. But uh, uh, and uh, it, it was in uh, in our region, uh, study, uh, Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, and Libya. Uh, Libya, uh, it was a problem with uh, girls and women. But in our th these three countries, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, we 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 practice uh, sport and physical education uh, normally without any problem. We uh, at school uh, we, we must have equipment uh, uh, for, for for practice uh, physical education as we we must have uh, uh, books and uh, anything. Uh, for, for to to study, it's obligatory. Uh, unfortunately, in this moment, uh, all, many changes, many changes for girls and for women uh, to practice sport. There's a question here from Sujata Gangopade. How does it feel to be standing on a podium? on the Olympic, how does it feel to stand in an Olympic podium presenting your country? I, I, I had not this, uh, this, uh, this challenge to, to, to be in the podium. Uh, I, I represent Morocco in 1972 with my colleague Malika Hadri. It was the first uh, North African participation in Olympic Games, not only for Morocco, uh, but uh, in, in this period, our participation was, as uh, Pierre de Coubertin said, uh, it, the, the importance is to participate, not to, to, to win the medals. But the first time we, uh, Morocco had the, his uh, first uh, um, Olympic Games in 1944 with Nawal El Mutawakil uh, for women. And in 1960, uh, uh, Morocco had the, his first uh, men Olympic medal in the mana marathon. In, uh, marathon, for Radi, men. Okay. There's one question. Uh, but it was, my, um, it was when, when Nawal El Mutawakil was in, uh, in the podium, uh, you know, I, I coached her. And oh. it was, yes, what? yes, in, in her beginning, in her beginning of uh, uh, track and field, I coached her. And uh, when she was in the podium, uh, it was like me in the podium. It, is, it was fantastic, wonderful for every uh, woman, every man in Morocco and in Africa and in the uh, Arabic and Muslim countries. It was uh, wonderful her, for her and for Asaida Weta, two gold medals for time for our Arabic and uh, Muslim countries and African countries. No, African countries before it was Gamudi and from Tunisia and the uh, foreign Kenya. Uh, oh. This one more question is um, you find in hurdles, like you said, hurdles, your country is doing excellent distance running. So what is special? Is there some peculiarity that you are coming excelling in this field? I, 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 uh, I remember it. Uh, maybe one of you could remember uh, I began to practice hurdles when it was in program uh, 5600 meters for girls. Okay. And I had the, 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 the best mark uh, uh, in, uh, in Africa in, in this event and so in France. And after that, I practiced 
88 and zero hundred meters. And I had a, a, a best mark in this uh, event. And after this, I practice uh, progressively 100 meters. And I had the African record in this event. And progressively, in 1978, I practiced the first time in Bucharest, in Romania, 400 meters holders. And uh, it was uh, the, for the African records uh, and Moroccan records and Arabic records. Uh, 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 the, this, this event for Moroccan is progressively uh, uh, for, for regional, uh, historically regional, continental, and uh, Olympic and world athletics. So I had the African record and champion title. And after that, Nawal El Mutawakil, the Olympic title and medal, gold, uh, gold medal. And after that, Nizha Bidouan twice uh, world champion in this event. And one time uh, bronze and bronze medal in uh, Olympic medal in this event. So it is an historical event from Moroccan athletes, women athletes in Morocco. Yeah. Uh, Sandia, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, ma'am. We're just eagerly waiting to hear you. It's, so the podium is full of powerful women. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, please, uh, after after the, my conference, you must give me note to my English. Sure, sure. Yes, Sandhya ma'am. Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Kishore, uh, Dr. Fatima, Dr. Usha, and everyone else. It's a pleasure to be with the athletes uh, on this uh, uh, occasion. We are all undergoing a very difficult time due to the pandemic. And uh, we are all planning how to do our uh, outdoor uh, uh, during these difficult times. And uh, it is always heartening to hear from uh, celebrated athletes uh, and uh, that too, uh, their findings based on research, how they are excelling in the field and how uh, uh, the history and lineage of uh, the athletes or the background, all these are playing uh, a very important role in uh, their performance. Uh, it, it has been very heartening to uh, listen to you uh, and I congratulate you on your uh, success and also your efforts to uh, I leave the ladder behind for the uh, coming generations. That's a great uh, thing to do for the coming generation. So uh, I would request all the uh, participants here uh, to talk out strategies uh, to uh, continue with the athletic practices, physical exercise practices during the pandemic. organization also and LNCP is going to help us on this uh, regard shortly and uh, from my personal experience I find that uh, though I do not go to uh, the gym or the uh, squash and all nowadays uh, not even for running in the uh, in the stadium which I used to do uh, but still uh, I have been able to maintain myself by practicing yoga, walking and everything in the uh, house itself. But uh, apart from that, as far as the performing athletes or uh, police recruits etc. are concerned, they have to do a lot of uh, activities together. And how to do all these things, uh, keeping the social distancing as well as the um, uh, hygiene etiquettes 
uh, that is of uh, great importance. For example, uh, uh, climbing a rock, uh, rock climbing, uh, how you will do when every time you have to sanitize it, that is a great uh, question. So like this, how are we going to chalk out uh, strategies? It's a big uh, uh, dilemma right now, but I'm sure with uh, enterprising um, athletes and coaches and doctors, uh, definitely we will be able to bring, uh, bring out uh, uh, very successful strategies and we will be able to continue uh, producing outstanding athletes and we will be able to do all sorts of outdoor training uh, in future also. I wish you all the very best and please ponder over uh, this point which I have uh, spoken to uh, right now. Uh, thank you, Anna Dor. Thank you very much. <laughs> but excuse me, uh, is Rosa uh, is uh, is Rosa present? Rosa is here. Rosa, yeah, Rosa. I, I I need help, please. Yeah. Many uh, many information. Rosa is not there. Okay, Kluka, are you there? We'll, we'll get back to you. No, Rosa is not there. No, she'll Rosa join. She'll join. Kluka, uh, Kluka, are you there? This was yes, ma'am. Uh, it this was very very interesting, Fatima. I did not. Um, know the his, history of Moroccan women and sport. So um, this gets me very interested in, uh, in making sure that we continue to uh, record the history, but also tell the stories. It is also important for you to share your stories about men in sport and how men have helped women to continue to succeed because sometimes I believe that the men who are very helpful women, it, it's very important to continue to be sure that they are these sort of unsung heroes because they usually are in the powerful positions and they can be helpful, but we don't give them much credit for helping to make humanity better. So uh, for the men, please, please uh, uh, know that um, your story about uh, helping women in sport uh, is also a very important one to say and to record. So Fatima, thank you for that. Thank you very much. But, thank you. Uh, you, you. You know, in, in Morocco, all the time, men help women to succeed in sports. That's right. Yes. Uh, Beatrice, are you there? Beatrice, I think I can, I can see you. But, but I want, I want to, uh, to say something Sure. To, but, but I don't understand what she gave me, uh, many information. I, I'll, I'll give it to well, you. Okay. I'll give that to you later. But I just asked Beatrice and I'm trying to get Rosa. Beatrice, please. Wait. Well, Fatima, congratulations. It was Thank very you. Good to hear your presentation and uh, to know more about your country and the other countries that you mentioned around. And uh, it's very important for women, women to have more power and uh, to have some more better position in sport. And I can see that uh, you are struggling, your generation, the new generation. My question is, what would you say to the, the new generation to have more power? in your country. Do you have any message for them? Oh, that's great. Yes. <laughs> you know, the new generation, uh, uh, I think new generation in Morocco, like in other uh, 
everywhere. In, uh, it, uh, I tell them the, the universal generation, the, uh, the, the Facebook and uh, Twitter and uh, <laughs> all the <laughs> virtual generation. <laughs> yes, uh, and it, it's universal. Uh, I, uh, uh, I see that the, the practice, uh, practice, you know, that, uh, they don't practice sport as uh, in the past. They lose le, 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 their time uh, with Facebook and uh, electronic uh, games, virtual games. Uh, and uh, I am uh, working in the uh, World Organization to give uh, uh, an international message to, gen to new generation to be more active. To, to, we are, we are uh, uh, thinking about a, a new model of uh, physical education. Maybe we, we, we couldn't, we couldn't, in the future, we, we could not speak about physical education, but uh, uh, other, uh, other terminology, and not physical education like the like the past, but but it will be maybe uh, individualization in in uh, physical practice activity uh, only the, in, in first for for health for well being uh, because the problem with. Uh, 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 professionalism with money and the uh, sport uh, uh, give another uh, another uh, ambience, another uh, atmosphere to uh, to the sport. And the g new generation don't like to to, to practice uh, sport. They like to to uh, to be uh, uh, relaxed, uh, uh, to 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 have. Uh, uh, amusing exercise, physical exercise, amusing like escalade, like uh, other things, but sports performance, uh, it's not attractive now for generation. Uh, and uh, it's a universal problem, uh, unfortunately. Uh, for our generation, we, uh, we go to, to the schools and we uh, try to uh, to, to to encourage the new generation to be active. Uh, every activity they like, not uh, I uh, to to in to give him. You must obligatory uh, practice basketball. No, they must. They, they want to, to to innovate. We must innovate for them, and with them. They, they have, they have, new generation have more ideas than, than, than our generation. And uh, it, it is a problem uh, at, at the world. So we are, we, we are uh, in the phase to think uh, about the future, how we'll be, and especially after this pandemic, how are we going to, to practice sport? And the pandemic is still there. And it, uh, maybe it, it's coming more and more. Though we must think about uh, other things, uh, other, uh, other still to practice, uh, uh, to develop uh, um, and control motor learning and human performance in the old, other way not la like uh, the, the actual or the, the, the past. Uh, unfortunately, I, uh, I have idea, but I, I have no words in, the, in English to, to give you more. Okay, no, I think it's good, very good. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very much.
Merci beaucoup. It was, like, uh, it was wonderful, uh, Fatima. Because if you ask me to speak a foreign language, I don't think I would be able to do anything. You have, I, you have spoke a foreign language, English. I need to thank you. I, I uh, spoke. Uh, I speak also Romanian very well because I I studied in Romania in Romania five years ago. Uh, but uh, English, I, I, I told you, we, we, we don't practice English in Morocco. That's the problem. And uh, for, for every language, you must practice it. I understand. <laughs> but, but you, yeah, thank you. It was so nice hearing you. To be, to be able to, th to, to, to think Absolutely. in this language. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Kishore, sir? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Fatima and Fatima. I think uh, uh, Morocco is uh, a great country which has produced many eminent persons, French Montana, Jean Rene, and so on. And also the great athlete of ever all times, Naval El uh, Montfala, uh, that is a hurdler who in 1984 Summer Olympics, Los Angeles, she for the first time, 400 meter hurdles, she won the gold medal. And in me, after that, soon after that, I think uh, she was made the sports minister of Morocco. Am I am I correct, uh, Madam? Fatima. Fatima. Fatima, can you hear what Kishore sir said? Uh, you might no, be knowing, uh, the, the, the accent. The accent. Uh, Kishore sir, can you now, go a bit slow? Kishore yeah. sir. No, I was it, referring about Naval El Motawak, Naval 400 meter hurdler of Los Angeles Olympics, gold medalist. Naval El Motawak. Okay. He was the 400 meter gold medalist in, uh, in Los Angeles Olympics. And then, after again winning the medal, she became the sports minister of Morocco also. Is that correct? Yes. Fatima, ma'am, you know her? Yes, I coached okay. her in the, oh. his, her beginning he <laughs> athletics. <laughs> coach. She had so, coached <laughs> So, you know, and uh, in a great other, very many athletes, Kikam El Gorouj, Neha. Yes. Neha Bidron. Neza Bidwan. Nodreen Nebet. Nod, yes. Hasna, Hasna Ben Hassi. Ben Hassi. Said Akuita. Said Oita. Said Oita. Yeah. So, yet, yeah. you know, there are many eminent, many eminent world renowned sports persons come uh, yeah. from Morocco. And Morocco, with all being, you know, a country considering India with you know very like a state in India, but you know the, your contribution to exports is a you know phenomenal. So and uh, whatever you have done, your contribution by as a sports person for having represented the Olympics and also in the field of sports management in the academics is remarkable. We appreciate even your uh, 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 presence. And whatever you have said on your life itself is uh, something to be studied. Being you know from the country like Morocco, to have come up to uh, you know such pinnacles in academics as well as in sports performance is something remarkable. We appreciate your kind gesture of having inspired us despite all challenges which you have confronted in uh, you know getting in line with. Lot of technical problems, then later the language problem, but nothing was barring that shows your determination. That even you know, with all the sort of challenges, technical problems, uh, language problem, but you made it. You have done a great thing. We admire your your passion towards sports, your passion to towards uh, you know, you know, disseminating the knowledge you have. So uh, thank you so much, uh, ma'am, Dr. Fatima El Fakir. Uh, and thank you so much for participating and giving you sharing your experience, thoughts, and inspiring and motivating our social, our community coaches and physical education teachers. So I think we'll definitely follow the Moroccan example, what you have told, and we'll try to uh, do, you know, contribute. And I think our teachers would have been definitely uh, uh, be, you know, motivated with your inspiring answers.
maybe you can share your uh, um, um, you know uh, email id to the participants so in case they would like to uh, uh, communicate with you or take any inputs they can do that uh, in uh, offline also. thank you so much thank, thank you thank you so much you you uh, uh, my uh, my presentation was about women Moroccan athletes, elite, Mor uh, but uh, you speak now about the uh, in general of uh, sport in Morocco. We have many many athletes in many other sports, uh, 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 but uh, it, it was not my presentation. Thank you very much for all the uh, information you you give about uh, Moroccan uh, sport. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Thank you, Kisho, sir. Uh, Rosa is not there. I think Rosa has left. So we all, we all almost got the end. She, she had a, um, she uh, texted me that there was a power failure. Uh, and so she hoped to get back, but uh, the power is not on. Okay. Okay, uh, Pika. It's okay, fine. So, on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, I'd like to thank first Dr. B. Sandhya, ma'am, Sandhya IPS. Indeed, a very prominent, distinguished personality who is fighting for the upliftment of women in India and especially in the police field. She's come with a lot of strength. New, innovative, brought in music therapy, started with yoga. So her contribution is immense in this field. And indeed, I think it's, uh, it's a proud moment where Madam Vos presented us for, this, uh, for our session. So in her absence, I'd like to thank Ma'am. I'd like to thank our most distinguished speaker, Fatima. Uh, sport has no language. You proved as a great Olympian. You proved as a coach who brought Olympic medalists. You proved as a great academician. So I, I don't think there's anybody who got that kind of a star and a medal. <laughs> so I'm sure for our program, your presence and your smile, I, I don't think you're, you're becoming younger and younger. You look great. And it's so inspiring. Your presence has been inspiring for all our participants. And we wish we could see you. We've seen on the screen, that's great. But I'm sure many are eagerly waiting to listen to you. And the best part was you're speaking in a foreign language. If you ask me to speak French, I don't think I would ever do it, but you spoke and I think you did wonders. So on behalf of the Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports, Kalo India, LNCP, and everybody present here, a big thank you and a salute. Wow. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank Rosa in absence. I'd like to thank, thank Luka. Luka, thank you so much because I feel that now you are a member of a family. And then when we don't see you, we miss you. So you are a part of us. <laughs> and thank you so much for being with us, encouraging us, and making this program a real international. Thank you, Kluka. I'd like to thank Beatrix for your valuable presence. I'm, I'm happy that she got in. And I think it's all supporting the women folk. Thank you so much, Beatrix. In spite of a session yesterday, you made your presence today. Thank you so much. Thank I'd like you. to thank... Dr. Kishosa, who's been very instrumental. And the best part for all the panelists, I could say, you just put anything to him. He said, come on, go ahead, let's start off. He just waits for things. And I'm sure we can do a lot of things now. Sir's ready. He says, always go ahead. So signal is always there with him. So we are very fortunate to have a head with us who's always very supportive. And especially to do anything, we are indeed thankful to Kishosa too. I'd like to thank all the invited guests <laughs> and my dear participants. It's a participants, all have, it's because of you, this program is a success. And for the information of the participants, I put across the 15,000 teachers who are registered. That's how I could get such a big response from my speakers. I need to really thank the speakers because you have spared your valuable time to be with us. That's the major thing which I'd like to say, because if you ask people, they say they would not have no time. But now the world is so small, the entire world is in the screen today. So that's the best part of it. The networking has been great. So once again, to each one of you, thank you and namaste. We have a session tomorrow by uh, Mary, Ma, Merlin Gonzalez. 
She's, we have a program. So please do be with us tomorrow for the evening session too. So once again, thank you so much and namaste. 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 <laughs> Shukran. Shukran. Shukriya. Shukriya. Shukran. <laughs> Shukriya. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Shukran. Shukran. Hi. Shukran. <laughs> very, very kind of you. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you.